rule into the future. When you went to sleep to study art, the one thing you did for four years, so you might specialize in sculpting, or you might specialize in uh, model making, or you might become a fine artist or a painter. For the four years, the one course that was constant was clean. Because it gave you an understanding of precision and accuracy that none of the other crafts could quite give you. <clears throat> because you had to understand how to construct a roller coaster and produce the same shape consistently and constantly. So I'm going to talk to you about, um, I'm going to look at the history of the alphabet. So I'm going to try and cover two and a half thousand years in 20 minutes. <laughs> so I'm really only going to pick a few letters and go through the main script. So I've brought a little selection of jewels here that are very delicately balanced. So I'm using a, a squared brush. And one of the first scripts we see, starting with the Roman script, is a script called um, the Republican Capital. The funny thing about the Republican Capital is it looks surprisingly modern. And that Republican Capital had a B, had a U cut. When we look at the U cut, what we see is a little key pattern that was cut into the stone so that the Romans could push brass into that. Now, imagine you being a slave or not a senator, just a regular citizen, walking into Rome and seeing these beautifully painted marble triumphal arches with gleaming brass. Of course, we don't have any brass anymore because the Romans was war, they made brass out, they made the art for, 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 for weapons. So, about 100 um, BC, we see this amazing shape. By the time we have the first century CE, we see the development of the wonderful the shapes that we love and we use for those of us who love serif once there's a sound serif <laughs> one you sound serif people like here and we are here and the development of the Roman alphabet like everything that goes through history lettering ties in with decoration it ties in with architecture it ties in with fashion but it also ties in with the mentality of the people and we see in Rome the formation of society we see society becoming a little bit more elegant. We see Rome going through to the second century with a beautiful alphabet called um, Capitalis Actuaria, also called Rustic, which is not only beautiful, but very complex.
we see an absolutely fantastic shape, which I will come back to in a second. But of course, one of the things that we note in the Roman Empire is all the letters are bilinear. They all look capitals. None of the minuscules existed until about the 6th century, when we see the development of a half and a short spread. Jump ahead a couple hundred years, and we see the development of another script called Carolingian. And Carolingian is quite an interesting script because it starts to get a little bit more flavor. And Carolingian script is one of the few scripts that actually um, was, was developed because when Charlemagne became emperor, he got lots of tributes lots of monasteries, lots of absolutely stunning Bibles, but he would read them, even though they were all in Latin, because everywhere wrote a different script. So he decided to commission the script, and that's why we have the Caroline Minister, also known as Caroline, the Carolingian. Of course, when Charlie dies, we see a French Caroline, an English Caroline, a German and we see the establishment of national identity in script. Of course, Carolingian gives way to a slightly angular form of it, which we call protoglossic. <clears throat> and that protoglossic is the beginning of a very interesting period. Now, The thing about the Gothic scripts is in the Gothic period, we have roughly six major scripts. And these scripts are all referred to as Gothic or Black. So when scribes talk about the Gothic period, we tend to refer to the But we also consider which script we're talking about. The principal script of the Gothic period is a script called Textualis Quadratum. And it looks like this. And with Rotunda, you know when you produce the perfect Rotunda, rotunda O, when you can 
fit a lemon inside of you. <laughs> and then we see in France the development of this group called Tata. And so this beautiful hand starts to fall. Now we see national identity associating itself with a specific script. You see this, and you think of German. You see this, you think Italian, or Spanish, or Portuguese. You see this, and you think, well, oh, a really nice complex French letter because it's just follows you. And of course, people fell in love with the Gothic period, and of course, that is an end of the Gothic period because it's so decadent. And so we see a fall again, we want to go back to, you know, cleaner lines. So we see the development of a beautiful script called the humanist minuscule. But of course, the problem with the humanist minuscule is it retains something of its Gothic forbearance. Now, one of the most amazing things about from this period onward is we have. With music, you learn how the notated music of the period, the high church music, affects the structure of the script. So let's look at the textuality. And let's look at the speed of the script. And I hope from this you will understand how music can really affect the way, not only the way you think, but the way you think of the script. This script takes us right up into the middle of the 19th century in Europe. In America, the script changes just a little bit and it becomes something much more decorative. After the middle of the, after the beginning of the 20th century, 
the tools that we use do not be used up here. So after we get done, we have a little chat and we can show you some of the stuff we have. Now, can I ask you a video? Can I write it? Uh, it can come up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one here from operations. <laughs> <laughs>